Tracked armored fighting vehicles in the Second World War can be divided into four broad categories with basic functional distinctions between them, at least in theory. Tanks were fully tracked turreted armored vehicles intended for use in a mobile role. They were organized into mass formations and employed to create breaks in the enemy front line that could be exploited by infantry and other tanks. Tank destroyers were fully tracked turretless vehicles mounting proven anti-tank guns to be deployed close behind the front to prevent enemy tanks from creating their own breakthroughs of the front line. Initial German designs used improvised mountings and an open top design, often using captured guns and chassis. These stop gaps were replaced by more successful purpose-built designs using German guns and chassis as the war went on. Assault guns were fully tracked turretless vehicles mounting howitzers and high caliber guns to provide direct fire support for the infantry. Self-propelled guns were artillery on track carriages to provide mobile indirect fire support. Tanks were employed in their own battalions and regiments in the Panzer and Panzergrenadier divisions. Anti-tank battalions in German divisions were fully motorized and in the infantry divisions were the only fully motorized units. Towed anti-tank guns of various calibers were used by the infantry divisions, and tank destroyers were used by all types of divisions. The panzer divisions required artillery that could keep pace with the tanks, and therefore utilized self-propelled guns instead of the usual horse-drawn guns. Assault guns were employed in their own units, initially called battalions and renamed as brigades in 1943. These units did not belong to divisions, but were core or army-level assets attached to divisions as needed. As the war progressed, the lines between the functional distinctions blurred heavily. Tanks, for example, were often required to fight other tanks, and increasingly heavier anti-tank weapons were mounted to tanks such as the Tiger and Panther. Assault guns were simpler and less expensive to build than tanks, and as a result were often used to take the place of tanks and tank destroyers. In the 65th Infantry Division, for example, assault guns and tank destroyers served side by side in a divisional anti-tank battalion. In 1942, Anti-Tank Battalion 165 included 12 towed anti-tank guns and 14 Martyr III tank destroyers. In January 1944, the towed guns were replaced by M42 assault guns. In December 1944, the Italian-built M42s were replaced by 14 Jagdpanzer 38 tank destroyers. While the line blurred during the war between tanks, tank destroyers, and assault guns, they were still generally employed in their own platoons, companies, and battalions. For ease of logistics and maintenance, vehicle types were very rarely mixed within units. This reality is often ignored in popular culture, for example war games where different AFV types are sprinkled into company sized engagements with no rhyme or reason. Film and television productions often get this wrong as well probably due to financial considerations or for story purposes. A fleet of different vehicle types was fielded in Band of Brothers, for example. The three separate vehicles shown in this scene would in reality have belonged to three different units. The Martyr was a tank destroyer, usually employed in divisional anti-tank battalions. The Sturmgeschutz, as discussed earlier, was employed in independent assault gun brigades. And the Jagdpanther was concentrated in core-level heavy anti-tank units. The likelihood of these three vehicle types operating in close proximity to each other would have been incredibly low, but one can forgive the production staff for wanting to utilize them. The different types better help viewers differentiate them and more closely follow the action on the screen. Different references will define the broad vehicle types in slightly different ways, and even the militaries themselves use different designations from army to army. For example, in the Commonwealth, Tanks were divided between cruiser and infantry types. Cruisers were fast, relatively lightly armed, and tended for the same breakthrough role as German tanks. Infantry tanks were slower, heavily armored, and equipped with fire support weapons which meant they were employed more like German assault guns, even though they had turrets. The Canadian Vehicle Data Book published in 1944 listed the Sherman as a cruiser tank, and also listed the so-called Firefly as a cruiser tank, despite the fact it carried a high-velocity 17-pounder anti-tank gun and was generally employed in an anti-tank role. Just like the first, the Second World War was marked by evolutionary changes in weapons, vehicles, equipment, and tactics. It should come as no surprise that nomenclature was often unable to keep pace, and that even today, there can be no agreement on a single, easily understood set of terminology that can be applied to all the nationalities that fought the war.